so I've never done anything like this before, but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm going to respond to viewer comments, specifically the ones posted to my video entitled 2018 Game Room Tour. I'll put a link in the description if you want to watch it. In that video, I showed the video game room that you're seeing right now, which includes a bunch of gaming consoles hooked up to the TV and ready to play. The reaction to the video was larger than anything this small channel has ever seen before. As of right now, there's over 4,000 comments. Most people had something positive to say, but there were many contentious statements that kept coming up over and over again. Those are the ones I'll be responding to today. Ones that express disagreement and concern about the gaming setup, and about game collecting in general. I'll be discussing things such as my love life, <laughs> how I get rid of dust, the amount of electricity I use, and my reason for not using emulators. Along the way, I'll be sharing a lot of personal details about myself. It's all going to be one large conversation about gaming culture. Hope you enjoy. The way I'm going to do this is by grouping similar sets of comments together and addressing them all at the same time. Here's the first set. I get so many of these comments, I could spend a whole video just showing them. People make assumptions about my love life based on what they see in the game room. I know some of these people are kidding, but the fact is, it's so near the top of everyone's minds, so I just want to delve into that a little bit. I also want to point out that most of these comments are posted by other gamers. Of course, the way I play my games is different from the way most people play their games. But I'm not the only one on YouTube with a large setup and a lot of games. So it got me wondering, do those other collectors get similar comments? I've watched many of those videos over the years, and I don't recall seeing any virgin comments under those videos. Just to be certain though, I went back and looked at some game room tours by prominent YouTubers. I found a few virgin comments, but not as many as I get on my video. It could be that those channel owners are going in and deleting those comments. However, it's most likely I'm getting more of those comments because I'm doing something drastically different. It could be about the way that I have everything hooked up in the room with a bunch of wires. It looks like I spent a lot of time in there doing this, which I have. And to some, that's very extra nerdy to put that much effort into these old systems. My voice could also be a factor. I can sound like a cringy teenager sometimes, making me sound younger than I am and socially inept. When I voice chat in online gaming, people mistake me for a kid sometimes. But I believe there is a medical reason why I sound the way I do. I was playing baseball in the 6th grade and got hit in the nose with the baseball. I didn't think much about it at the time, I was bleeding all over the place, but I didn't go to the hospital. Years and years and years later, I started having nasal difficulties and I went to see a doctor and he said I had a deviated septum and that I had signs that I once broke my nose. I think it might have affected my voice as well. I do have one more theory as to why I get the virgin comments and this is going to get into some psychology, so bear with me. Those other YouTubers show themselves and they reveal a lot about their everyday lives. They make their personas part of the channel on my channel, I don't show my face at all, besides a few slip-ups here and there. The main reason I do that is because, well, I'm camera shy, I also have to operate the camera a lot from behind it, and when I created the channel, I wanted it to be only about video games. And I thought that if I showed myself a lot, it would draw attention away from the games. Since I don't show myself and don't give intimate details about my life, I am essentially a blank slate. When people try to construct me in their mind, I think they have to depend on a stereotype. In my case, the stereotype of the inept gamer who has no luck in dating. They only see a room full of games, and they never see me do anything else besides game-related things in that room. 
Off camera, I'm actually quite a goofy person, but it doesn't really come through in my videos. But I've decided I'm going to change that up a little bit. I'm going to start showing myself in my videos, and I'm going to talk more about my life. We'll see if it results in fewer virgin comments. But that's not the reason I'm doing it. I just think it's time to inject some personality into the channel. So starting right here and right now, I'm going to show myself to you. Hello, I'm Kevin. Welcome to my game room. I've had this channel for seven years now. I've had this game room for eight years, and I've lived in this house for 10 years, and I've also been married for 11 years to this person right here. Hello. If people still think that gamers have trouble being in relationships, they are behind on the times. The vast majority of gamers on YouTube, collectors or not, are in relationships. It's hard to find anyone who is single at all. I'm left wondering, do people making such comments actually know a lot about love and relationships? Are you coming to bed? Not right now. I'm too busy calling people virgins on the internet. By the way, who cares if someone is a virgin or not, or if they don't date? It does not make them any less valuable to society. I urge the gamers of the world to let go of this virgin mentality. So here's the next set of comments that kind of relate to what I've already said. What these comments indicate is that people undervalue time spent on gaming. And let me explain with an example. Picture four people at work on a Monday morning, and they're talking about how they spent the weekend. One person says, I binged watched Netflix for six hours. Another says, I watched football for six hours. Another says, I did yard work for six hours. And the fourth one says, I played old video games for six hours. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? Out of all these time-consuming things, that person who played the video games is probably going to be frowned upon. They may be even laughed out of the room. A large portion of the population still views gaming as a childish behavior that is intellectually vapid and lazy. Meanwhile, binge-watching TV is popular and is considered a cool thing to do by the public at large. I would think that actively playing a game is more beneficial to one's brain than passively watching TV. A lot of scientific literature supports this notion, but these studies don't get a lot of coverage in the media. It's hard to break a stereotype. That being said, I think it's equally sad that gamers themselves carry the same types of views. I'm not saying sit there and play video games all day. It's all about balance. Some people may look at my game room and think that I stay in there all day. The truth is, I don't go in there a lot. I have a lot of different things I'm interested in, beyond video games. I enjoy being around nature, so I do a lot of hiking. I do some form of hiking every other day, even during the winter. I even go beyond that and I try to memorize the names of trees and the names of creatures and plants and all those things, just to make the hikes a little more interesting. And 95% of the time I'm doing this activity with my wife. Dust is not much of an issue in the game room. Let's look at how dusty things are in the game room right now. This is how it looks after not dusting for four months. It isn't that bad. I'm not a scientist, but I'm thinking the larger the setup, the more time it takes for dust to accumulate on it. Since you have a lot of surface area, but a finite amount of dust, it takes a lot longer to accumulate on everything, I think. It also helps that the room has an air intake vent, which sucks dust out of the room. But what do I do when I need to dust? I get a duster out, and I dust. It's as simple as that. I get this feeling that some of these commenters don't do a lot of dusting in their houses. It's very easy, and it's not a reason to avoid having a video game set up.
building this setup did not increase my electrical usage because everything has a switch on it. When I'm out of the room, those switches are off. Electricity cannot get through switches that are in the off position. In my tour video, I do have a lot of extra things turned on, but that's not normally how I use the room. Typically, I just have the TV on and the game system on, and maybe charging a controller or two. So basically, I'm using the same amount of energy as someone else who does not have this setup and only has one game system attached to one TV. People think it's too much trouble and it costs too much money to have all the original equipment when you can just emulate the games on a computer. Some of these comments seem to suggest that I've never even heard of emulators. The plan for this room from the beginning was to have the original systems and the original games. Gaming on an emulator just isn't as exciting for me. I got good news. What? You said you always wanted a dog. Yeah. I got one. Really? He's right here. See? He's emulated. I saved us some money. Look at him. Yeah. As someone who grew up with a lot of these systems in the house, having them again triggers nostalgia. If you didn't grow up with these systems, I can understand why you view these items as just a bunch of unneeded stuff. You may also not mind if the emulator doesn't replicate the original game exactly. For me, that's a deal breaker. I'm also not too keen on having save states. The temptation would be too great for me. I don't even like to use cheat codes when I play games. I want to be challenged. Even though I chose the path of non-emulation, that doesn't make me a saint. I still buy bootleg gaming posters, and that's because I can't get them any other way. Sega, as far as I know, is not making Streets of Rage posters. If they did, I would be buying them. As far as the ethics of emulating, I've gone back and forth on it. But for now, I think there are some valid reasons for doing it. Physical copies of things have become more scarce and prices have gone up. If people didn't emulate these games, I think the prices would be a lot higher. I also think it's important that all games be preserved to keep them from suddenly disappearing. Apparently my video got a lot of views from people who play on PC. So why do I not have a gaming PC in this room? There's a lot of reasons. I don't play PC games. There's no space for a computer in the room. And lastly, the overall theme of the game room is console gaming. Whenever you have a hobby, you have to have constraints and you can't just go after every single thing that relates to your hobby. You have to define it. And for me, my hobby is console gaming not PC gaming. With that being said, I do own a PC, and I actually ordered the parts and put it together myself. It's probably not powerful enough to play the latest PC games. I use it for editing videos and for internet browsing. It sits in my living room so I can do things as I watch TV. There's some people who don't like the idea of having an old TV. I assume they're thinking that everything should be hooked up to a modern flat screen TV. Here's the thing, old systems were calibrated to play on old CRT TVs. They look fantastic on them, there's no lag, and you can play light gun games on them. You cannot play light gun games on modern TVs. 
I do realize that some older systems can output RGB SCART, and with the right equipment, I can play those on a modern TV. That's something I continue to look into, but doing so would involve a massive reconfiguring of my setup, something that would take a lot of planning. I still wouldn't be able to play the light gun games though, so. My CRT TV has been with me for a long time. I bought it new in the store, and it fits the theme of the room perfectly. It might stick out like a sore thumb to younger people who never had one in their household. But I grew up with these types of TVs in my home, so I'm used to it. Bottom line is, the older TVs are good for older systems. People don't like the way the shelves look. Since I wanted everything in this small room and hooked up to the TVs, I didn't have much of a choice. This is the criteria I had to work with. I had to be able to put systems on all four sides of the CRT. I needed the shelves to be open with no backing so I can route hundreds of different wires which all need to go to different places. I needed to be able to tie the wiring. I needed the shelves to have a lot of depth to allow for the system and the controllers. And finally, I needed the shelves to be adjustable and expandable. These chrome wire shelves met all the criteria. The typical entertainment centers or wood shelves would not meet these criteria. Here's the last set of comments I'll be covering today, and they concern the Ouya. Please understand my perspective. I have played every system in this room, and I've been gaming for 40 years. The Ouya is not, and never will be, the worst game console. The internet is just flat out wrong about that. I actually intentionally put an Ouya box on one of the shelves in my video tour just to mess with people, knowing how they feel about the Ouya. But the bottom line is, it's not that bad of a system. So that's all I have today. Please consider subscribing and clicking one of the videos you see on your screen right now. I hope you enjoyed the video, I'll see you next time.